Welcome back to Defense Like a Jedi. Hey, I thought that Siege video I posted was going to be a quick and easy tidbit. Build your T4s, move on. Uh, a lot of people calling me uh, uneducated uh, is a nice way to say it. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't understand the value of posting comments on somebody's video and kind of being insulting rather than just like having a conversation and saying, Hey, you, uh, I don't think you're right because of this instead, just automatically flat out calling somebody an idiot. When, um, we both have probably have proof of our point, <laughs> but to just be so one-sided and, and narrow-minded, um, uh, I don't think it's going to get you too far in life, but, uh, honestly, it, it doesn't offend me. Uh, I just would like your receipts um so for me i feel that t4 uh siege layer uh five million siege is a i called it a meat shield um somebody didn't like that but it's definitely a decoy to take turns away from the big siege that are coming in uh what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna probably build that up to 10 million 20 million i'm not gonna go to 100 million like somebody suggested because somebody could just point farm off of me and that that couldn't be good. I do need to go and take a look at the points. Like the points don't reflect the power. So just because I'm doubling up on power, uh, Ebony does like to reward uh, the big spenders. So they did make the point system so um, they could score points even though they're losing power. But you saw my point spread. Uh, I'm very happy with my point spread in this SBS. A lot of people ask me, why aren't you ghosting your mounted? Well, I, I know how to ghost. Some people said I need to learn how. It's like, come on. Uh, I know how to ghost my troops. First of all, if they have a three, four man rally on me and I have reinforcements, if they're scouting me left and right, if they see that my my only layer that they can score points on are ghosted, they're going to cancel. I don't want to do that. I'm going to take the win. Let them try to kill my mounted. Yes, sometimes I sneak them away, and I do even better, but it's just the point. Okay, so today's video, what I'm going to cover are some of the the benefits of flat refines. So it came up when talking about the T11 rallies, why people's uh, stats are low, and uh, what's really going on there is obviously my general is using flat refi refines. So uh, we can leave this screen. We're going to take a look at my... Uh, I really don't like sharing this stuff, but you guys are worth it, right? Um, so if you look at my, my uh, Siege General, I'm doing all flats for the attack. For the HP... And the uh, defense, most of them are flats, but I'll take percentages as that one's almost all percentages. Um, you know, those aren't as debuffable. Your your siege attack is getting fully debuffed, um, assuming their subsidies are engaged in the battle because you're attacking them. Your siege is going to be fully debuffed, meaning cut in half. So for every 100%, it's going to be down to 50% attack, just cut it in half. So, uh, but this also applies to your wall general, these flat refines. So I don't care what I get. If I get a completely 25% siege attack or mounted attack, I spin through it all. I mean, you can only get so many flats and if, and I have a small T1 layer, I only have a hundred million, 90 million T1. So most of you have 300 to something stupid to 500 million to a, to a billion uh, T1 mounted troops. So this applies to you even more than it applies to me. But this is one of the few spots where you can beef up that T1. I don't know. You guys don't seem to like the word meat shield. Um, it's just an insurmountable amount of math that you can gain by using flat refines, and, and that's what we're going to cover today. So um, what I want you to look at is, uh, uh, let's just get into it. When looking at a T1 mount, well, well first of all, i got to show you where I got this information from. So in my first video, back in the, or my second video ever, 
uh, I I showed I directed you to this website called EvanyWiki dot or EvanyWikiGuides dot com, but you need to search. Um, I had to search for troops initial stat list to get here. Um, I I couldn't find it on the. Uh, I think it's under. I think it's under the military buildup. But I went to that page and I couldn't find it. And yeah, this website. It's a little scattered, but there's a ton of great information here. It seems to be keeping up to date. Um, there's stuff like, uh, you know, your subsidy generals, which ones, you know, which stats you can compare right in here. There's even a stat um, uh, simulator, so you can put in what gear you have in your subsidies and everything and figure out your boost. To me, there was a couple things missing because I, I couldn't select the star level on the sub general, so... You have to manually manually enter all that. And that's that's pretty tough. But there's there's a ton of good stuff on this website. But this shows us the base stat. Um, and what do I mean by that? Did I cover this? I got interrupted in in the middle of this video, so uh, uh, I don't even know if if I talked about this yet. So what a lot of people do is is this is my T1, and you'll see I have thirteen sixty eight attack. And then if I got 25% of that, that might come out to be like another 350 attack points. But that's not how it works. Um, the green numbers are with my research and everything I've added to my city to get that boosted up. So going back to Ebony Wiki, you'll see, um, I suppose I need to take a picture of this. So this is the mounted column. So these are the base stats for a T1 delete that so you can see the tier is a t1 in the mounted stat there i should i should hold it like that okay so you can see it's 2200 attack so now i went i tried to do this video on a uh, computer and i couldn't get it to work uh, it, it would only record one app at a time it was really frustrating so um here we got at the top um those stats that we just talked about are listed right on this line. A 220 attack, 150 defense, and 400 HP. That's the base stat for a T1. So if I were to get a 25% gold spin, it would add about 55 attack, 37.5 defense, yada, yada. Uh, what that equals, you'll see in the line below it, this line here is those two totaled up, and that brings my T1 mounted troop up, not even to a T2 mounted troop attack. It's real close to a T2. So that's what a 25% does. Um, but if you look at the next level, we're done with that. If you look at the next level, um, these are the flat refines that I can get on my gear at that level here. I can get a 19, I can get a 1,096 attack. And then you can see when those add up, the number is much bigger. 275 attack versus 1316 attack. And it can't be debuffed. Whereas if you go up to the uh, above, if I get fully debuffed, I'm back down to a T1 mounted troop. So what that gives me is the stats of a T7 troop. Now... That's just three pieces of gear. I get six pieces of gear. So I get two attack, two defense, and two HPs. So I'm I'm going to be much higher than that. Uh, nah, too bad I didn't do the math on that. I'm going to say it's equivalent to like a T9, T10 mounted troop attack. And you're talking about, in my case, 100 million. So take all that math. In order to zero me, they need to clear out all those stats of a hundred million at that power level with all my gear uh, and whatever else other stats I can I can throw on top of that but that's how flats work you won't see them on the buff screen and you won't see them in that screen that we were looking at before with the green numbers you you uh, I don't know it's kind of like a, a hidden secret so to speak um, but I mean I know a lot of you know that but this is just showing you the math. All right, I'm back to this page. I I, I got my point across on the uh, above stuff, you know, up here. But this stuff, don't even look at that. Those stats were all wrong. So here's the T11 siege. 
So if we're going to talk about refines, we're going to see that uh, this is the 25%. <sighs> How do I get here? Sorry, this is so cumbersome. This is the 25% re, uh, refines. You'll see that I'll get 485 attack with a full refine. I guess sieve gear might go up to 30. But um, the flat refines are down here. You're going to see that they're almost equal. They're really close. And they both give me a T12. But the flats give me a T12 that can't be debuffed. That's pretty critical, whereas the, the percentages can be debuffed. So that's why I use flats. Um, I didn't do the math on Big Siege. Um, it might be worthwhile to see the difference between Big Siege, Big Range, Big you know, Ground and Mounted uh, for your PvP generals. Um, you might be surprised. Like, if you're getting debuffed quite a bit on your attack, you, you may want to switch to flats. That pretty much covers it. Uh, on that note, uh, I did get some encouraging words on the, you know, the, the DNA explanation about how it's, it's mathematically impossible for DNA to exist off of evolution. It's just impossible. Flat out impossible. It could not have evolved. There's way too much information there. Uh, you know, it'd be way more likely to spill a box of alphabet cereal and, 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 and have it spell a novel when it lands on the ground. That would be way more mathematically likely than, than the DNA in a human, and yet you got it all over the world as far as all the different forms that are using DNA from plants to animals and whatnot. So um, another example of how how... The Earth can't really be billions of years old, like they tell you. Uh, are the comets that we're seeing? I, I don't even remember. I don't even remember the name of the comet that was just in our sky a couple of weeks ago. But these things have a a lifespan of of you know around ten thousand years, as far as they're they're dissolving. I mean, every time they make a loop around the sun and get near the sun, or even when they're not near the sun, they're dispersing. You can see they're trail they're leaving behind ice and whatever else um it means that they can't be old enough to have been here when the, the universe was created or uh the big bang created the universe uh it, it's just not possible so then they come up with a a, a theory that there's an oort cloud or a kuiper belt um that these comets have been forming in and that's the only way they just accumulate out in the Oort cloud and then they get pulled into the sun and they do this big loop and they keep coming up with these theories to explain away well maybe there's a creator maybe he created the the universe like this um and the funny part about it is nobody's ever seen the Oort cloud no, you, they just assume it's there almost like dark matter dark matter i don't know if you guys get in astrology at all or not but they can't figure out how these planets are staying where they are. Um, there's a lot of uh, I'm getting I'm getting into too many tangents, but uh, first of all, they just they come up with these theories, just like with the eyeball. There's no way the eyeball was 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 evolved because it, it's just it's too complicated, and and nobody's going to waste all those. We went through this, so they come up with a theory of you know photosensors turning into eyeballs. It's just not it. It's, it's, I mean, <laughs> who's less intelligent here to think that all these things created themselves when you can see the design? Uh, yeah, so getting back to the dark matter, if you really want to dive into that, it's, it's crazy because they can't figure out how stuff is being held where it is in the, in the universe. And they assume that there's dark matter. We've never measured it. They're trying to capture some in the gold mines underneath the ground. It's crazy. You want to be, you want to dive into something that all these scientists believe uh, that's goofy as heck. Look into dark matter. Maybe it does exist. There's a lot of Christian scientists that think the earth is young that still believe in dark matter, but I think we just don't have all the answers yet. Um, 
the reason they, they believe there's dark matter, if you look at a universe when it's spiraling, like a, in, in vision, in vision um, like, uh, you know, those fireworks that spin on the ground when you light them, they, go zzzz, they spin almost like a galaxy would. Well, the inside is spinning much faster than the outside just by centripetal force, nature, um, and you'll naturally, the inside is going to be spinning faster, and the further you get away from the center, it's going to be going slower. Well, these galaxies, they're not. They're uniform, and in, in the, they spin more like a Frisbee, almost in the fact that nothing on the outside is going slower than on the inside as far as, you know, nothing's being lapped. I'm going off on a large tangent here. <laughs> uh so they're they're coming up with these theories for these dark matter to hold everything in place because it's too amazing that everything is staying where it's supposed to stay without collapsing or expanding or or speeding up and slowing down um so that's that if you if you're bored enough go look into some of the dark matter it's not going to prove evolution or not it's just going to prove that uh we don't really know everything and and if you're into astrology a lot, you're gonna think you're gonna claim that I'm an idiot for not not believing in dark matter. But until five, ten years ago, they didn't believe in dark matter any either. What they go, they go to these conventions. All these scientists go to these conventions, and then they, you know, they take the their favorite theory and they vote on it. And if they vote that it's true, they all have to go back to their universities and claim it's true because it was voted true at the convention even though they have no proof that there's an Oort cloud even though they have no proof of dark matter um it just helps them explain how this could all be possible without a creator so i just challenge you to do your own research on everything you you're told I, i'm not a conspiracy theorist i don't think we attacked the world trade center uh, you know i don't think uh I guess I don't know if Kennedy was assassinated or not, or if our government did it. I really, I really don't know. Um, but you know, I'm not really a, a conspiracy. I don't think they put nanobots in the vaccines. Now I don't think the vaccines are for the COVID was great, but uh, uh, nonetheless, uh, my tangent is getting even further from where I wanted to. I did want to say, like, this is Answers in Genesis, as you see on my screen. That's a good resource um, to hear some of the other side the stuff that they don't tell you makes their theory impossible um there's lots of good stuff like yeah i've, I've taken it long enough i'll just try to do a tidbit every every time but uh i did get some positive feedback about about this so i'd like to do more on this um and also bitcoin let's hear for bitcoin it's been going great uh, my portfolio looks really good right now so uh, uh supposedly we're just warming up the uh, exchanges are running out of Bitcoin, and uh, if everything happens to my evil plan or everybody else's evil plan that I that I tend to follow, um, some people are predicting one hundred and fifty. Some people are predicting two hundred fifty thousand dollar Bitcoin this cycle. Some people are predicting this cycle won't crash like it does every other four years. Um, you know, we have a year to worry about, or to not worry about that, a year of growth before we have to decide if we're going to take profits or not. I'm taking profits. But uh, with all the institutional adoption, they're thinking that it might just not crash like it used to because they always would find stories like the U.S. government's banning Bitcoin, China bans Bitcoin, all these things to get the price to, to crash at the end of the cycle. I don't really know what they're going to do I mean, there's always a black swan event, you know, a chance, you know, COVID crashed it. So if they come up with another round of super monkey pox or something like that, uh, it, it, if, you know, that would crash everything. But uh, you, you never know. So, again, I'm babbling. Uh, I'll have to make a little post that I'm done with Ebony stuff. And for those that didn't want to listen to me ramble on about uh, all my crazy theories on Bitcoin and, and my proof of creation... So uh, on that note, uh, we will see you on the next one.